Hello, I'm Matthew Olson with Signal Fire. We're a creative marketing team out of Southern Wisconsin, and I am joined today with Stephen Pickering from Drywater Productions. We're here to talk a lot about video today. So much time and effort goes into the actual creation of the content when you finally actually have it in your hands and you're ready to put it to work. Sometimes it gets a little overwhelming. What do you do with it now? That's one of the big questions <laughs> that we get is, yes. is what do we do? Where, where, how can you use this video now? There are a host of options you can go with it. Um, you're going to have your obvious places for it. Yes, you want to put it on YouTube. Still, second largest search engine in the world. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to make sure that video is embedded on your website. But what's nice, when you receive that MP4, that isn't the only place you can go with it. Most social media platforms prefer it if you load that MP4 directly to them. So mm -hmm. For example, like you want to load your video straight to Facebook. And that's one nice thing that when you get an MP4 delivered, you have that flexibility. So let's look at some of these different platforms that you want to load your video in. Um, we had talked about YouTube and there are other video platforms out there like Vimeo and a host of others. Mm -hmm. But we're going to mostly focus on YouTube because that's where the bulk of the traffic is. Like we had mentioned, it's the second largest search engine in the world. We want that traffic. Mm -hmm. We want that connectivity. So when you, uh, assuming that the business or organization already has a YouTube channel or already has all that set up, you go through and you can upload that video. And in the same way you want to search optimize your website, you want to search optimize your video as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to look at making sure that all the way down to what was the file name you're uploading, making sure that file name is something that isn't IMG underscore Five edit, four seven edit zero zero one final revision <laughs> exactly <two. laughs> yeah you you want to have almost a real world name to it mm -hmm. um, gala promotional video or uh, animal shelter plea or there's something significant associated with that file name mm -hmm. keywords in there doesn't hurt but you go beyond that and you have the actual video title and the description. So that video title you want to make sure is also has some keywords in it. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that, you know what, making sure you have that important information in the title. So saying, okay, we're, uh, we've talked about Lakeland Animal Shelter in the past. So making sure that Lakeland Animal Shelter, capital mm -hmm. campaign plea video, sometimes it doesn't hurt to have the date straight in there, 2019, 2020 something in there that actually gives some kind of description to it. Getting beyond that, you get down to the description. YouTube video descriptions give you the ability to give quite a bit of content in mm -hmm. there. Give it a good description. You don't have to make it a transcript of the whole video, but you want to put important keyword-driven descriptions in there. And good few sentences. You don't have to put a novel, but a good few sentences in there and make sure that it's written in a language that's easy to read. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the biggest traps people fall into when they're trying to search optimize stuff is, man, we just need to pack in Stuff those it with keywords, keywords. Yep. in there. And, and ultimately Google has gotten to the point where <laughs> it is now recognizing natural language mm -hmm. and will actually give you uh well, they'll penalize you if you're keyword packing, but you want to have it naturally and easily, naturally uh, written, easily readable. With the, the YouTube description, that's a great yeah. opportunity to be able to put in other links to, to different things. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's really popular for reviewers or, or even vloggers yes. to say, here's the, here are the tools I use. Amazon affiliate link, yep. Amazon affiliate link. Yep. There's no reason you can't do that with not even affiliate links, but with... Um, Traffic back to your own website. Exactly, Amazing. yes. And then link the product and, and talk about um, the different types of uh, fittings you can use for a plumber. Right. Um, that you, can, you can use that even if it's not a, a, um, a, a service or a product that you're making money on. Sometimes that can even go a long ways. Just 
Oh, hey, here's absolutely. Here are the links. Well, when you're when you're looking at those kind of descriptions and contents, we we talk a lot about authenticity. You know what? Mm-hmm. Are is your content helpful and useful? So when you kind of take putting your client or customer first mm-hmm. in how useful your content is, that becomes far more. Uh, f- you get far more traction with it. Mm-hmm. You really get to better your reach with content that's usable, shareable, and readily available. Yeah. So once you do have that into YouTube, and once you do have that kind of search optimized, making sure that's also embedded in your website through YouTube's yeah. little iframe code and making sure. And one of the things that sometimes people forget is make sure that embed code shows up nicely on your mobile device. A mm-hmm. lot of times when people are making shortcuts and developing the, their website, they'll forget to say, okay, we need to make sure we're taking embedded websites or uh, embedded uh, videos or other materials into account when it's doing its mobile optimization or mobile responsiveness. Yeah, disabling the uh, autoplay. Yes. Uh, disabling the um, suggested videos. Um, it's not good when <laughs> when your competitor shows up after you because oh, it wasn't disabled. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. One of the things that uh, can frequently get overlooked when you're uploading the video is making sure there are subtitles with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, YouTube does have some tools that will allow you to import the mm-hmm. text associated with it. But there are a lot of websites that will actually generate the right file format and the right text surrounding the closed captioning or the transcript mm-hmm. of your video. I believe it's a little over half of videos get played with no sound. Even yeah. though they're supposed to be working, a lot of people are watching those videos when they're in the office and making sure that it is readable as well as auto uh, available uh, by sound is really important. I have sometimes, cause I'm, I'm so used to mobile and I'm so used to seeing the visuals. Sometimes I've caught myself not even realizing that there's no sound and reading the, the <laughs> subtitles and I don't even like reading subtitles, but I've, I sometimes I just naturally do that. And I go on to the next one Oh, absolutely. and I totally got the information, even though I didn't hear a word of it. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. That's, and, and there's so much power to, uh, that, written word especially when you see it and Mm -hmm. hear it at the same time it delivers even more impact and has even better retention yeah and i know we're talking about subtitles right now but that's the same thing with um video sales letters or or those even taking a powerpoint presentation and bringing it to life by animating words animating the drop down boxes the text people remember that oh absolutely It's, it's so engaging even if it's something you're not necessarily interested in and it can be as simple as boom, 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 boom. Right. It doesn't need to be fancy. And people will, will like, it, it's a rhythm. It's, it's, it's weird. It doesn't make sense. But it, 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 it just, converts so well. Well, exactly. And I think you hit on a really good point with just the idea of converting. Mm-hmm. Is the more you can get that video content to be retained, mm-hmm. the far better likelihood that you'll actually see a return on it, it converting to actual sales. Mm-hmm. So yeah. as, as you get this get these videos into YouTube, and Vimeo works just as well, but as you get into this, you start realizing, okay, this is kind of a great home for the video content, mm-hmm. but there are other homes. So as we look at being able to take that video, that MP4 you've gotten from your video partner, and uploading it to social media channels, you're opening up a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. Um, Nobody likes to talk about the fact that Facebook and YouTube don't exactly get along. In fact, they're a little bit at war with each other. That if you try to put a YouTube link on your Facebook page, it does not go anywhere. The amount, the percentage. No one will see it. Exactly. uh, I think it might even be below 1% (laughs) reach for a posted YouTube Mm -hmm. link. So it's good to take that MP4 and upload it a lot of times you refer to it as natively uploading it Mm -hmm. to your social media channels. And that gives you the ability to have far better reach on Facebook, on Instagram. It's also great when, when it's on, when you upload it to Facebook, someone can go to your page and go to your videos. They don't need to scroll down your feed. And that's, 
And that's been really helpful for us. When we uh, create a new video, we'll throw it on YouTube, we'll throw it on the different, channel, the different channels, but we'll always on, on LinkedIn, uh, yes. we'll always on Facebook, we will have that original file that gets uploaded natively there because it then goes into the library. And it's not a library of links of past right. posts, it's the library of this video, this video, this video. So, And when you have site visitors or people consuming that, that's where the reach really starts saying, hey, we've got all our videos on our LinkedIn business page, mm -hmm. on our Facebook business page. That's where that really allows them to consume more and more video content mm -hmm. and get a better sense of it. So as you're looking at video content on social media, you also got to remember that length matters. Mm -hmm. So even though you have that wonderful plea video that goes eight minutes and 43 seconds, nobody's going to be sitting on Facebook looking at an eight minute and 43 second video. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of when we talked earlier about having a video that's broken down to smaller tidbits of videos. That's where this really comes into play. Yeah. You can sure you can have that eight minute forty three second video that you have on your IGTV channel, mm -hmm. but you're going to want that fifteen second, thirty second video that goes straight to Instagram. Yeah, you want that thirty second to one minute video on Facebook. LinkedIn is a little more forgiving in terms of sometimes you can creep it up to two minutes, but really you really want to keep it on that sixty second range, mm -hmm. sometimes even shorter. But ultimately with that, the one key advantage as you're distributing these videos, you're really kind of able to get away with that. Yes, you've built one piece of content, but you're using it many, many times. Yeah. And so you have your video on your website. You have your video on your social media channels. One of the areas that gets overlooked a lot is making sure that video ends up in your email newsletters. Mm -hmm. One of the things that can absolutely skyrocket your email click-through rate is having that video. Now, you can't embed a playable video within an email newsletter. But one of the most tried and true and effective tactics you can use is you can take a screenshot of that YouTube player page, mm -hmm. drop it in, in your email newsletter, so that when they click on it, they go to the page on your website that has that embedded video. Yeah. So it, uh, earlier we were talking about just, you know, you see that big video play button and you, you've got to fight the urge. You instinctively you, oh, just want to click it. I just want to click it. Mm -hmm. just, just, uh, do you really want to watch the video? I don't know, but it's a video. And I if you're not it. sure, well, we'll just click and see. Yeah. Which gets to keeping it short if you can yes and getting that important information right in the front because if if Correct. you if you fight that urge and you finally give in you click it and three or four seconds go by and it's just not engaging you You're just out. lost that viewer oh absolutely so. and that's and that's probably a, as you look at getting that video and rolling it into so many different applications mm -hmm. to your marketing you always want to make sure that man it's it hooks you right out of the gate mm -hmm. Um, save the save the best for first. I think you said earlier, mm -hmm. and I think that that principle really holds true. If someone wants to get a hold of you and ask you to do a video. Mm -hmm. How can we get a hold of you? Uh, check out our website, drywaterproductions.com. Um, we have a Facebook channel and YouTube, YouTube channel as well. Um, but uh, just shoot us an email or, or give me a call, and and I will talk about some ideas and see what we can do. Sounds great. What's your URL one more time? Uh, drywaterproductions.com. And your phone number? Phone number is 608-728-2456. Fantastic. Looks like it will be able to help a lot of people with some video. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us. My name is Matthew Olson. I'm the president and creative director of Signal Fire. We're a southern Wisconsin marketing agency that specializes in destination marketing organizations, tourism, hospitality, and other related businesses. We hope that you'll swing by and check us out on our website, signalfire.us, or give us a call at area code 262-725-4500. We'd be happy to answer any questions or find out how we can help you.